everybody my name is hannah and this is pepper and pine and today i want to share with you some of the resources we're using for our mineralogy block now these are only the most recent resources that i'm adding to this unit but you can find an extensive list of the resources that we've used on the blog post that accompanies this video and you can find that link down in the description box below it includes our geology unit our mineralogy unit our earth science unit and there's still some fossil videos on that blog post as well and then if you would like you can move into our dinosaur and fossils unit our evolution unit and our reptiles unit um, they kind of all all sort of go together in um, geological time. So these are the books that I have just recently picked up. Um, a few of them we bought from Amazon, a few of them we checked out from the library, and a couple of them we picked up from the library bookstore. So the first book I want to share with you, oh and let me just show you the main lesson book that we're using. This is by Live Education. This is for grade six. This is the mineralogy block. And this is the main lesson book that the teacher will use in order to create the lessons for this unit. I found this, this particular main lesson block a little bit challenging to use this main lesson book to, to do the lessons. And so we ended up including a lot of other resources, which really took our unit in a different direction. This is my uh, fourth and final time doing a mineralogy block, or you can consider it geology, although they are a little bit different. And I wanted to stick as closely to the main lesson book as possible but we are still going to include a couple extra resources. A lot of these are for me as the teacher to prepare these lessons and have background information. And then there are a couple of books here that are just going to be fun for my daughter and I to read together. So the first book is called Minerals. This is called A Very Short Introduction. And there is actually a whole series of books. Um, we have the one on rocks and they're by different authors, but it's the same publisher and so here in the back of the book you can see like a huge list of all of the books that they have so it looks like over three no nope, over 400 books um on different topics so i picked this one up because i it appealed to me that it was so short uh bar barely 100 pages and it seemed although it is kind of on the you know smaller tighter font so don't let the book size and cover deceive you it's still packed with information and I started reading this on my own in preparation for our lessons and I found it so intriguing and I didn't have time outside of our homeschool to read it. So I ended up starting to read it aloud to my daughter, which some parts she found interesting, but for the vast majority of it, it was too complicated for her and for her development. It just didn't make sense. It talked a lot about elements and the periodic table and the like how minerals are created and from dying stars and all of that really intrigued me but it actually wasn't the right um content for her but i still i i'm still going to refer to this as much as i can for my prep work and then we also got the one on rocks and so in case you're like me and you might be a little bit confused on rocks versus minerals um, minerals are the building blocks of rocks so oftentimes you'll find rocks with many different kinds of minerals and minerals themselves you can imagine them like crystals and i apologize if i'm misrepresenting the difference between rocks and minerals um, but they they're inorganic they form a crystalline structure and from um and also you'll know that when rocks cool slowly for igneous rocks for instance you can get more crystal formation and if they cool quickly and outside of the earth's surface they're not going to have as many or any crystals and all of those minerals are going to be together and you're not going to be able to to see what that rock is made out of the same way you might with a rock that cools beneath the earth's surface because it cooled or at a slower pace and so then those crystals could form so this book is going to be on rocks and again we've only just started these so i can't give you a review so much about these books rather my intention in buying them and our just our first impressions about them i do really like them again these would be resources for you as a teacher or i think they'd be suitable for a high school level if you want to if you're homeschooling high school then you could definitely include these in an earth science unit for your high school student I picked this one up from the library because I didn't think that this would be something that we would want to have long term in our own homeschool library. This is Rocks and, Min Rocks and Minerals. This is the Peterson Field Guide and you'll know that this is an extensive, really rich book and what I love is that it does include some actual photographs of specimens in color which is really great but they're all at the center of the book and then the rest of the book is going to have like 
a ton of information on each of these rocks and minerals. I mean, right down to like the chemical composition and everything. So this is going to be one of those books that definitely you could use for your college, I'm sorry, high school student. Uh, but if you are, you yourself are really into rock collecting and, and searching for minerals and geodes and whatnot, then this would be a really great resource to have. We're probably not going to use this in our homeschool. I did put it on hold at the library and picked it up because I did want to look through it and see if there were just some selections that I could read through for where we are locally. And that would work really well with these two books, Geology um, Underfoot in Southern California and Roadside Geology in Southern California. So that's where this book would come in really handy. So these two books, actually primarily this book has been on my wish list for ages and I did not pick it up the last time we did our geology unit, which is totally fine because they've updated it now. So now we have the new version and I did pick this up from the library when we did our last unit, I believe. And I started to read it and I was completely fascinated by it and then I forgot to actually buy it. So we finally have it now. And this is something that I would rather read with my daughter, but I'm realizing that some of these books, they're just not intended to be read alouds for your students. You really are going to have to read this on your own and process the information and then really deliver the content out of this book. And then this one I'm super excited to dive into and specifically look at the areas and the sites that are near us so that we can go and visit some of these things. I think this is going to be so much fun um, for me and for my mom. Um, we'll see if the rest of the family enjoys it as much as we do. But I find that the formation of California is absolutely intriguing. It's so fascinating. And this is going to help me understand that better and hopefully find some really cool specimens and understand the geology of the area that we live in. So from the library, we also picked up this book called Rock Collecting for Kids. And I like this book so much. We, uh, my daughter read it aloud and then I read it aloud. And I found it to be just a really great, concise overview of rocks and minerals. And it says rock collecting for kids. And you have like this little tiny, like little toddler hand here. But this is like really great for middle school and elementary upper elementary school i think it's really thoroughly done we are i think on page like 60 so we haven't actually finished the book itself but what we've read so far i've been very pleased with and this is one that i um we're at the sort of the end of our school year at the moment and i'm considering buying this one or like because we've got we've gotten it from the library but i'm considering actually purchasing it or something that's um, related a little bit more to the mineral study that we're doing okay so let me show you three books that we picked up from the library bookstore i think this one was a dollar this one was maybe a dollar and this one maybe was 50 cents or something like that it was like very inexpensive earth and sky this one is like a little bit on the young side for my daughter but we went ahead and got it because we have other books in this series and we really like them they have like these acetate overhead pages in between two color pages that you can kind of see like the inside and it's sort of just like see you can still see half the page and we just kind of <laughs> like that interaction um, interactive book and um, this is just you know, this would be like a really quick uh, read aloud picture book that you could do with your students and I'm really delighted that she wanted it because she's 13 now but if you had um, older middle school students and you had younger students this would be ideal because you're reading content that appeals to younger students because it's a picture book but the content itself will work really well for your older students because I find that sometimes picture books are marketed for really young students I've seen a ton of really great physics books that have such silly illustrations for like say five and six year olds where the content is actually for middle school and upper elementary or at least middle elementary but it's marketed for like two and three year olds it's a conundrum I don't understand it um so this is one of those things where you when you have some picture books it's really great for all ages um this one I almost wasn't going to pick up we have so many books that are really similar to this but when I browsed through it it had um a particular two page spread that was exactly the stuff that we were learning in our mineralogy unit and I thought that it would be perfect it was just talking about where energy comes from and oil and um, peat moss and 
plants and animals that lived millions of years ago. I'm like, oh, this is exactly what we're doing. So I went ahead and picked it up, even though I'm pretty sure I have something that's really similar to this. I'm not a big fan of the question answer science books or any any kind of question answer books. I find that they are too just disjointed for my liking, but they can really work when you're just sort of sort of just wanting to dive into a subject area and you really don't have m much background and you really don't have an intention of where you want to go. This is just kind of fun because it asks questions that maybe you wouldn't have thought to ask and then it answers them, which is kind of neat. Um, this is another book that I almost didn't get, but in the end, I found a couple of projects that interested me, but this is the Earth Science book, Activities for Kids. Um, the reason why I was kind of like on the fence about this one is that we've had other Earth Science books like this in the past where they're all just black and white, um, some simple illustrations, and it just didn't seem that appealing to me. And since we have other science books that have more colorful images and just, I don't know, maybe more intriguing projects. I wasn't really thinking of getting this, but then I did see a couple of projects and I don't know if I can point them out to you now. I think this was one of them. I've been wanting to do this for ages. Uh, I, I think this is what this is. Um, where I, and honestly, I did it, oh gosh, probably like 15 or 16 years ago, a project that was like this where we layered, um, dirt and mud and rocks and clay and kind of baked it and, you know, in the sun. And then we lifted it up on its side and then we poured water just to see what erosion and water damage or, you know, water, how water would shape the, the environment. Um, and so when I saw that in this book, I'm like, oh, I really want to do that. So I went ahead and picked it up for a dollar or 50 cents. Not a big deal. If it doesn't work out, it's really easy to donate or pass on to another homeschooling family who could enjoy it. Don't forget to check out the blog post that accompanies this video. You're going to find tons and tons of resources and lots of videos and links to so many of the projects that we've done. And if you'd like to see how we are homeschooling on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.